Jenna, it's been a nice, beautiful day so far. Yeah, that's right. We had the clouds yesterday, but the sun came out today. And earlier, we had to move our clocks forward an hour. It was spring forward day. Daylight savings time begins. And that means our sunsets will get later. So tonight's sunset is 7.30 this evening. And then tomorrow's sunrise will be around 7.40 in the morning. So extra sun time for us tonight. You can see now on our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview cam. It is still bright and beautiful outside over at the airport. Very windy, though. Our flag is blowing a lot. High pressure overhead. There's the cold front that brought us the storms and the rain on Saturday morning. And over the next couple of days, we'll be under high pressure. So nice sunny skies, but also the cooler temperatures. Right now, it's already around 8 degrees colder in Augusta and 5 degrees colder in Aiken compared to yesterday. So we're done with the 70s, at least for now. Temperatures right now in those middle 60s. 65 in Augusta, 60 in Crawfordville, and 63 in Edgefield. As for the dew points, they're down into the low 20s. So definitely some nice dry weather over the next couple of days. It will stay windy over the next few hours, though. Those winds coming in from the northwest and the gusts up to around 25 to 30 miles per hour. So windy for now. But once the winds settle down tonight, we will have some radiational cooling, which means temperatures will get very cold. So even though we sprung forward this morning, temperatures are going back to winter conditions. We'll be at 34 degrees at 8 o'clock in the morning. There's actually a freeze warning in effect for some of our northern counties as temperatures could get as cold as as 31 degrees, the rest of us in the mid-30s, so there is some patchy frost possible. I'll have all the details on that, and then I'll look at the warming trend coming back quickly, coming up. Back to you, Bria. Thank you, Jenna. In Augusta Mountain... And began today, but the temperatures are still making it feel like winter time. We will have some freezing spots tomorrow morning along with some frost, but we will warm up quickly later on this week along with some chances of rain. All those details when we return. The WGBS. WJBF Live 5 or 6. Welcome back. Happy Sunday. You're taking a look at this beautiful view over the Savannah River on our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview Cam. It's been a great day. We've had nice sunny skies after a very cloudy past few days. No rain today. It is cooler, though, with a high of only 65 today. Winds are also pretty high as well, coming in from the west. 14 miles per hour. Dew points are low in the 20s, so we won't have any rain over the next couple of days. Cooler temperatures are our main story for now. Right now, we're seeing those low to mid-60s across the region. 61 in Sparta, 63 up in McCormick, Barnwell, you're at 64, 66 in Bamberg, and 65 in Sylvania. Those sustained wind values up to 19 miles per hour in Lincolnton, also in Edgefield and Aiken. And when you factor in the wind gusts, those are even higher. 28 miles per hour in Edgefield, 30 in Aiken. Actually, no wind advisories were issued today, but nonetheless, it is still very windy, at least for the next few hours. High pressure back in control, clouds to the south of us. There's the cold front out to sea that brought us the rain on Saturday morning. Now that we have the high pressure moving in behind that front, it's also going to get much colder. And in fact, it'll be feeling more like winter time tomorrow morning with frost and freeze conditions across the CSRA. Not all of us will be at the freezing mark. And in fact, in Augusta, I'm expecting us to only get down to around 34. 
four, so that is above freezing. The patchy frost is still possible. Now, for some of our northern counties and some of our western counties, Hancock, Glasscock, up to McCormick, Lincoln, and over into Saluda, that's where it's possible that temperatures could dip below freezing between the hours of 4 a.m. to 9 a.m. So freeze warning is in effect, so definitely keep that in mind. That could definitely cause some impacts to plants, bring the pets inside. Remember those four Ps. But this is pretty typical. The average last freeze happens on March 18th. The reason we have this freeze warning, though, is because the growing season just began last week, so not the best timing there. But after this, we will warm back up quickly. In fact, temperatures are going to take a roller coaster ride, and it looks like my clicker died. So this has been happening a lot lately. I'm going to have to go over to the computer and see if I can change the graphic here. We are going to get all the way up to around 80 degrees on Thursday. That's going to be our Thursday afternoon high. And then after that, we are going to see our temperatures stay pretty warm. Starting on Tuesday, we will be at 72. We'll continue to see those upper 70s into the weekend as well. And our lows are also going to rise all the way from the 30s to 60 on Saturday morning. So another very up and down week when it comes to the temperatures. No chance of rain for now, but we will see those rain chances later on this week. I'm going to jump ahead to our future cast on Friday because not much going on for now. But we're going to have a cold front come in from the west. This will bring us a series of areas of rain and thunderstorms moving in Friday evening. It looks like on Saturday we'll have a bit of a break, but then another system comes in on Sunday. So expect some heavy rain at times, thunderstorms, and of course we'll be monitoring this for the potential of severe weather. But in the meantime tonight, lows anywhere from, as I mentioned, 31 to around those mid-30s. So it is possible we'll see some frost. Highs tomorrow in the 60s, another cooler day, nice sunny skies. And here's a look at that 10-day forecast. We are warming up quickly and then we'll start to see that chance of rain Friday through next Monday. And then the first day of spring is next week. And we'll be right back. Red Headlines on News Channel 6, brought to you by Jamie Casino Injury Attorneys. The News Channel 6 mobile app is now even better. Download it today. Welcome to the... Coming up, the Augusta Women's Golf Team hosted the Dallas Bar Invitational. Kira has sports next. and the insurance company so you don't have to. And remember, you pay nothing until we win for you. sports coverage you can count on. The Augusta women's golf team hosted 16 other college teams for a very windy day on the links. It was the final round of the Valspar Invitational at Forest Hills Golf Club. Now, originally the tournament was scheduled to wrap up on Saturday, but due to a weather delay, the final round was pushed to Sunday. Ole Miss University entered the day looking like they'd take the tournament, and they did, finishing eight under. Three strokes ahead of South Carolina, who took second place. And for the Gamecocks, Hannah Darling was part of a three-way tie for second place individually. But first place went to Mirabel Ting. She's a former Augusta Jag and current Florida State Seminole. She finished seven under par and said it was so good to be back here in Augusta and see everybody. Augusta head coach Caroline haas Hegg said she was so pleased with the way that the tournament played out. Everyone participated and helped out, and despite the chaos of a rain delay, it was a great tournament. Um, exciting, definitely. I was looking forward to it this week. Um, nothing much. Um, still going to be the same routine all along, all week. Yeah. So basically, um, we already had this um, two weeks ago in Melbourne, Florida. So this is the second time that we have off in the middle of the round, um, which we never kind of did it before, but um, it's kind of cool to have um, off day and get used to it 
and get out there and play. Uh, it's wonderful to host such a prestigious event here in Augusta. Obviously, we, we had to call some audibles with the timing of the event, with the weather that came in Friday night, Saturday morning, but uh, thanks to the staff here at Forest Hills, all our volunteers, everything went off without a hitch, so we're really glad we got 54 holes in. I thought we hit the ball very well this week. Uh, that's been our strength all year. I think we uh, still need to putt much better than we did today, especially. We, um, we're just failing to take advantage of the opportunities we're giving ourselves with good shots. and. Um, that's something we can keep working on, though, and, and I'd rather we, we keep addressing it and be ready in the postseason than be peaking right now. So we still got some work to do. I think we've got to continue on working on building our competitive edge a little bit. We, uh, we might be too likable right now. We might need to get a little tougher and a little meaner. Another great Valspar Invitational. Well, the USC Aiken softball team is looking to get back in the win column and out on the field after this week's series against Catawba was postponed due to weather. In a doubleheader against USC Buford, the Pacers got the win in Game 1, 4-1, to one, and now they're looking for a win in Game 2. They lead 6 to nothing in the top of the fifth. I'll have a final score update for you on this game later on tonight. Well, today is also the final round of the Arnold Palmer Invitational, and yesterday was a big day for Scotty Scheffler. He's one of six players who shared a lead entering Saturday. Scheffler would find himself in the fairway bunker on the par 4 15th hole, but check out this shot. He'll stick it right on the green. What a shot from Scheffler. And then he'll have a lengthy birdie look, this one from 15 feet. He makes it look easy as he moves into a tie for second place at 8 under with Will Zalatoris and Shane Lowry. Now Scheffler from a tough spot on the fringe, par 5, 16th. Watch Scheffler put this within two feet of the hole. He would tap in for birdie. Finish the third round tied with Shane Lowry for the lead. He's currently still in the lead today, but the day is not over yet. I'll have highlights and show you the winner of the 2024 Arnold Palmer Invitational later on tonight. And finally, the Atlanta Hawks are looking to keep their three-game win streak alive as they host the New Orleans Pelicans. That game has just tipped off, so I'll have highlights of that game later on tonight right here on News Channel 6 at 11 p.m. That does it for your 6 p.m. sports, and we'll be right back. Call 30.